Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship uh, with the congregation of uh, Bill Helvey Church. Uh, we're glad that you're joining us this morning as we continue our studies in John's Gospel. And we're going to begin this morning uh, with a song that I'm sure many of you will know, although it's a modern accompaniment. It's Crown Him With Many Crowns. Let's worship God together. Let's take a moment to pray together now. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the source of all that is good and true in this world and the source of life itself. Thank you that from the very beginning you planned to bless us, not just with life, but with life that is real and full and free, firmly grounded in relationship with you and in the love that you have for the world. Lord, we know all too well 
that we often don't respond to your love or to your call in our lives. And yet we know the lack that we feel that remind us that we are not yet whole. The longings that point us beyond ourselves to the fullness that we can't find in our own strength no matter how hard we try. Lord, we praise you that all that we seek is found in Christ. And in him, in his life, death, resurrection and ascension, you've shown us how far you will go to bring us into the life that you want for us. Real life, connected life, spiritual life. We thank you that in Jesus' utter commitment to your plan, and his obedience to your will, you've left us in no doubt as to your love and mercy towards us. And so we praise you for the love that will never let us off, will never let us down and will never let us go until we have entered into the life that you have opened up for us in Christ. Lord, we come to this time as we are. We can't come any other way. And we ask that you would meet us here in a real way through your spirit and that we would leave this time comforted and challenged to keep living into this Christ life that you have blessed us with. Lord, may you work within us a harmony between the truth of our being, who we are in you, and the way of our being how we make our way in this world and why we are living father help us to truly live because we ask it all in christ's name who is the life and the light of humankind and in his name we pray together saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we're going to hear again the words that we opened with last week. John uh, chapter 1 and reading verses 1 to 5. And Linda Anderson is going to read for us. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is a poem called Gale. I'd share that moment with you if I could. The morning sun straining through scudding cloud, swathing the wind-scoured fields in shifting light. And yet, for all her wintry glory bright, the trees and scrawny bushes bowed, not to her, but to another. A gale swept in, swept clean across the coast, and from my armchair, safe, I sensed its power in throaty gusts that made the rafters groan, and toppled heavy plant pots, left them prone and helpless mid spilt earth and flower their squat stability undone. The skeletons of climbing frame and swing keened as raw elemental air raced through, shuddering with the strain of staying still. The lengthening grass preferred to bend, its will less hardened, rippling like the blue-green seas that swell beyond the dunes. Strangely moved, I sat, transfixed and silent, breathing shallow lest the spell be broken. Embraced in peace, 
When outside all was rage, I lost myself in wonder for an age, knowing truth was being spoken, in words no ear could understand, but heart could fathom. The unrepentant wind was chiding, calling all who live too tame to wildness, not to shush the soul's long sighs to sleep, but send them skirling through the skies, airborne, breath-born, given a name, lifted like a child's giddy kite. I'd share that moment with you, but it's gone. Swept off on that same breeze to who knows where, yet traces linger, a yearning for more of all that we call life. I slid the door and stepped into the swirling air where dry leaves danced in ecstasy. It wasn't just Tuesday stormy weather that brought that poem to mind this week. It was one of the lines in the last stanza that speaks into what we're thinking about today. Yet traces linger, a yearning for more of all that we call life. In him was life, says John, and the life was the light of all people. I must have read that verse a hundred times over the years and you've probably heard it a hundred times. Two lovely, poetic, resonant words that we generally read in the season of Advent. But we rarely pause to stop and ask what they mean. So that's what we're going to do over the next couple of Sundays. We're going to think a little about life and about light. In him, John says, was life what is life? Well, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, always a good place to start when you're looking for the meaning of a word, life is the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter, including the capacity for growth, reproduction, functional activity and continual change preceding death. So at its most basic, that's what life is. And the Greek word for that kind of life is bios, from which we get biology and biochemistry and biosphere. And although that's not what we're looking at today, I'm not dismissing the wonder of that most basic but hugely complex level of life. My daughter, who is studying environmental earth sciences, would not let me get away with that. The heavens are telling the glory of God and so are the bees and the blue whales, the amoeba and the antelopes of the Serengeti, the red squirrels and the mighty redwood trees of California. The glory of God is seen in the wonder of everything that has been made and his work of creating and sustaining life in the cosmos is going on around us all the time. When the Apostle Paul visited Athens and tried to find common spiritual ground with him, he reminded them that it's in God that we live and move and have our being. All biological life has its origins within God. But we know instinctively that for human beings at least, there is more to life than mere biology. Life is more than bios. If you're watching or you're listening to this, you've survived the pandemic so far. Well done. You're alive. You're in the bios club. But let me ask you a question. Have you lived the life that you wanted to be living over this past year? Of course you haven't. You're missing people. 
You're missing many of the things that give your life colour and meaning and you can't help but feel lessened by the experience. You feel that you were made for more than life has been able to offer this past year and you're 100% right. But even when things are going well, regardless of COVID, before COVID, after COVID, I think there are little hints around us all the time that tell us that we are made for more than that which we have yet come to know. And our longings and our lack point to that. They're two sides of the same coin. They're revealing that what we are yearning for is what the Greeks called zoe, or spiritual life. When John says, in him was life, he's saying, in him was zoe. A life that's about close connectedness with God, with other people, with ourselves and with creation. That's the life that Jesus has in himself and it's the life that he wants to draw us into. Zoe, life. All of us, I think, put a brave face on to the world. We want to seem like we have it all together. But I think every one of us lives in the tension between that public face that we wear and the inner reality that is the true story of our lives. And it's inside that we feel our lack, even if we do a good job of covering it up most of the time. Some of us lack love. We didn't learn that language in our childhood homes and we don't feel fluent in it now, even as adults. Some of us lack discipline or lack focus. We don't seem to have the gene that brings motivation to get things done and we feel a constant low-level guilt that we're frittering our lives away and they may not amount to anything. Some of us lack confidence. Scratch the fragile surface of our composure and all you'll find underneath is anxiety in different forms. And others of us perhaps lack empathy, humour, patience, perspective, the ability to sustain friendships, the joy of living. The list is endless. We are not yet whole. And to pretend otherwise is just foolishness. I wonder if you're acquainted with the places in your life in which you feel lacking or are you still trying to kid yourself and everyone else that you're fine, you're whole? Well, here's a tip. If you don't know what you're lacking, try asking someone that you share your life with and I'm pretty sure they'll be able to help you out. Hopefully, they'll do it kindly. We all lack in different ways. And I could bring in sin here, the moral failures that our uh, our lack tends to precipitate as we try to deal with it and the unhelpful choices that we make as we reckon with our sense of incompleteness and our attempts to try and fill those gaps. But if you've heard me correctly this morning, you don't actually need me to beat that drum for you. Somehow at a deep level, We know in our bones that we've missed the mark of being fully human. And we know that a lot of the pain and the sadness in the world flow from the unhelpful or the selfish ways that we try to deal with our lack. I think that's a realistic assessment of where we are. But that's only one side of the story. I guess that's the bad news. But here's the good news. The the other side of the coin. If our lack makes us aware of our need, our longings point to where that need will find its fulfilment. Now and again, we all catch glimpses of beauty and wonder that leave us wordless and thankful and wishing that we could stay in that place forever, a wee bit like the disciples in the Mount of Transfiguration. Or we, miss, or we witness um, moments of grace or selflessness or courage that leave us humbled 
and inspired in longing to be better people. We all long to know the satisfaction that comes with a job well done and well earned rest taken afterwards and we long to give our time to the things that bring us life, the things that we can happily lose ourselves in for hours at a time and never blink an eye and those things are as different and unique as we are. We long for the company of people who love us as we are and with whom we can genuinely be ourselves. And we long deep down for a day when our wounds are healed and our restlessness settled and our hearts mended and when our lack is transfigured into restful, contented wholeness. Whether we would identify as people of faith or not, I think every human being knows those longings within them. I'm almost sure that you do. But what do those longings mean? What do they point us to? My mum was a collector in her own small way. She had cases and cases of Balik pottery, a lovely fine white Irish pottery, Royal Dalton ladies and Lilliput Lane uh, cottages. But my favourite when I was a kid was the Waterford crystal and one piece in particular. It was a cut crystal sphere about the size of a golf ball. But instead of having a smooth surface, it was cut into dozens of facets. And when you held it up to the light in a certain way, the light would refract through it and scatter dozens of tiny rainbows onto everything nearby. It was magical as a child. Still is as an adult, I have to say. And here's what I've been thinking this morning. What if our experiences of wonder and beauty and deep relationship and satisfaction and joy, the things that we long for in life and relish when we experience them. What if those things are like that refracted light from the crystal? Beautiful in and of themselves, but deriving their very being from Christ himself. What if they're little glimmers of his life? What if the wonder and the longing and gratitude that these things evoke is meant to draw our eyes back to the one at the centre who's the very source of life and of light? I believe that they're just that. And I believe that when we encounter those things in our lives, they're like an echo of the real life, the true life that we're meant to know. In the fullness of Christ. We started the sermon this morning with a poem that spoke of a yearning for more of all that we call life. I think that's something we all know within ourselves. And this morning John is telling us that the life, the Zoe life that we long for and that we glimpse sometimes in the wonder of living. The true fullness of that is found in Jesus the Christ, the Word of God. And it says, as we come to him, beginning in this life and ending in the next, that our lack finds its fullness and our longing finds its joy. Amen. And thanks be to God for his word. William Anderson is going to lead us now in our prayers for others. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning knowing our frailty. Yet we come knowing you as our Father God and your Son as our Saviour and Lord. We thank, praise, worship and adore you in the knowledge that we are held in the palm of your hand and that you will not let us go. Thank you for the certainty that you are with us through the good and the bad times here on earth and that one day all our lacks will be satisfied 
and all our longings fulfilled in your will when at last we reach that heavenly shore. In those things that we now lack and those things that we now long for, we see our earthly imperfections and sources of sinful behaviour. Help us to walk in the ways that you want us to and to understand that with you we have everything. Let our earthly lacks and longings shrink into insignificance. Let us turn our eyes to Jesus and look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We thank God for the life he has given us and the glorious life we look forward to in eternity. As we continue through the ravages of this COVID pandemic, we pray for those who have ongoing problems with long COVID and for those who are suffering loss due to this deadly virus. We thank you for the vaccinations that are now available to us in this country and we pray that the richer nations will help in their rollout to the less well-off countries. Let us care for others as Christ himself taught us. We pray especially just now for those in our congregation who have recently been bereaved. Give them that peace and comfort that only you can. We pray too for all that are ill and all who continue to undergo treatment. Let us, in a short moment of silence, bring their names before your throne of grace. We pray for our Queen and country. We ask your hand to be upon the Duke of Edinburgh as he remains in hospital. We pray for our government as they take decisions that affect us all and we pray for the devolved administrations. We pray for our church and our presbytery as they, with earthly eyes, try to plan the future. Heavenly Father, give them vision from you and renewed hope for the future which we know lies only in your hands. We pray for our congregation, our minister Paul and his family, and all who work for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you for all the renovation and building work that has been carried out here in your name and for your glory. Let all of this be instrumental in fulfilling the purpose you have for this congregation. To you we give the glory and honour. All that we ask is in and through the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is called Christ Our Hope in Life and Death. sing Christ alone Christ alone what is our only confidence that our souls to him belong who holds our days within his hands what comes upon from his command and what will keep us to the end the Check it out, church. Oh, sing hallelujah. I hope to springs eternal. Oh, sing hallelujah. Now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and Who holds our faith? 
shall we sing? Christ he lives, Christ he lives, and what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him. There we And now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.